Welcome everybody to another episode of Breaking the Fourth Wall. I am David Sanchez here with my co-host Junior Ruiz. Week three of our third season. Junior, what do you got for us today? Some sad news I hear. Yeah, I dropped my Rice Krispies treat before filming. I, that's how messed <laughs> up it is. You couldn't finish his Rice Krispies treat. <laughs> well, I don't know how sad I would say it is because, you know, I am a Decepticon lover through and through. Right, right. But as a Transformers fan in all around, uh, last week IDW released Transformers Robots in the Skies issue 27. The cover A had a Autobot emblem on the cover, like with flames and stuff, and it says Death of a Hero. Yeah. Well, who is the hero, Junior? Who is Fan it? favorite due to the Michael Bay films, Bumblebee. Bumblebee has died. He has kicked the bucket. But for some reason, I'm gonna like. It's hard to say. I'm gonna get serious for a moment because we're talking about fictional characters. Dude, this is serious. Giant man. robots and stuff. But as like I was talking to you about it off camera earlier, it's funny when you you look at it. It's like okay, these. The superheroes, you know, Spider-Man, Superman, all, all the heroes who've died, Captain America, you know, these humans, so to speak, they always come back. We know this. You know, like, oh, he's only going to be dead for a few months. But for some reason, Bumblebee dying doesn't give me that feeling. Like, holy and crap. And it was true. I didn't done. know. He's done. I didn't know. I don't pick up Transformers. I, I know what I love from the old school cartoons and uh the nineteen nice eighties movie and then the new movies. That's that's what I know of Transformers. Well, the new I'm stuff up, is a continuation. Yeah, of it. I'm setting up this stuff. Andrea's like, you know, Bone will be dead, right? I'm like, whoa! Andrea's <laughs> 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 all like, oh, you didn't know? <laughs> I'm like, no, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, he, it's true. I got totally emotional. He had gone under the. Uh, the physical transformation uh, of, um, well, obviously it's Transformers, haha, physical. But the look wise, he turned in, uh, when he died, I, I have been behind on my reading, I'm like maybe four or five issues behind. Yeah. But during, somewhere during the current storyline, which is um, Dark Cybertron, he re, uh, what's the word? When they, they get a, they, they scan, he scanned a new body. He got a new body. Okay, uh, yeah, oh yeah, when, yeah, when they, when you remember scanned, when they changed, when to they duplicate another body. Yeah. yeah. You remember when they turned him into Gold Bug? I do remember that, yeah. That's the body he was sporting when he died. He reverted back to the Goldberg. Goldberg, look at me. Who's next? The so Goldberg. Wait, but being, so being a robot, the fact that he's, he got this other body when he died, it's possible that his his spark, artificial intelligence or whatever, still exists in the his spark. other body. No, 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 no. It's transfer. Remember, the Autobot soul is the spark. Yeah. You can transfer that spark from body to body. The body is just a husk, yeah. you know? Um, the old body was just done, so they he returned to the gold bug okay. form and transferred the spark over. So the old body's gone, but when they killed him, he he was still going by Bumblebee though. When they killed him, it was a shot from the back directly through the chest, whole chest cavity explode, which is usually where the spark is located. Who did it? Shockwave. Whoa. Yeah, that's a good death. But you but know I who said, announced? Hey, okay, no, no, no. It gets, it gets shot from the back. For somebody who's not reading Transformers, but you know the mythos, let me go ahead and throw one more at you. Curveball right. here. Do you know who was saddened by the death and who announced the fact, the two words, he's dead, to the rest of the team? To the sound wave? Megatron. Really? Megatron has been fighting with the Autobots to regain control of Cybertron from Shockwave and his troops. Oh. Okay. So Shockwave is like the big bad where Megatron's already had his day in the sun. You know, he's been beaten numerous times. He's kind of just been like, you know what? I want what's best for Cybertron. Prime wants what's best for Cybertron. I see what they're doing here. Shockwave's methods are not the way to go about it. I'm going to help you. For, you know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Kind right, of thing, yeah. You know, So he's been working with the Autobots. Um, now, one, like I said, I've been behind on a few issues, so I'm not sure exactly how it happened. One of Shockwave's troops... Galvatron. What? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there was a cover that came out. <laughs> there was a cover that came out a few week, a few months ago that had Megatron fighting Galvatron on the cover. How does how does that happen? I haven't been reading it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that's that's going on. So I've got to catch up on that. But uh, Shockwave has this orb. From what I I didn't read the issue yet, but it will be reviewed to, on tomorrow's review episode. All right, yeah, you um, gotta review this because uh, I will. Review I'm it. gonna watch it. I want to see. I want to see what why there's two Galvatrons. Uh, like, 
I, there's just more questions. One Galvatron, one Megatron. I know what, after the Dark Cybertron storyline, they're doing a new storyline called Dawn of the Autobots. Yeah. And one of the most infamous images that's floating around online is Megatron with the Autobot symbol. I've seen that. Yeah, everybody's seen that. Uh, another thing. Um, so is Megatron like a Magneto character, basically? Uh, from what I'm seeing so far, yes. Is there? Yeah. Sadie, <laughs> Sadie's like in spy mode, like sneaking around here trying to grab stuff. Just don't hit the cord, Sadie. Or the camera. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it because I don't want to throw another Hispanic stereotype in here. Get that chancla on you. Get the chancla, yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> man, so thanks for blowing my mind away. Yeah, so make sure you guys watch tomorrow's review episode. I'm going to talk all, about All of the rest of the news we have really sucks compared to that. Um, one thing that really doesn't matter and everybody's glad, probably even more glad for it, but Fantastic Four, the movie. Yeah. Back rumors that send uh, it back being rewritten and recast. Thank you, thank you for one recast. thing. Recast, see, but there's they the studio has not officially confirmed that, have they? Uh, I'm hoping <laughs> there's a strong hope. I'm not sure if they officially what was the, uh, point? What was the point, anyways, of, of kind of because they made it look like this, like this ragtag team of people. Yeah, it didn't look like it had that family, it did, yeah, it's it like was they just took like. That away. It was like these guys are there. They're the Fantastic Four. They're a group of friends or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even though with the past Fantastic Four movies, the last two that came out, Jessica Alba looked more like a sister to the Captain America. Chris Evans. Chris Evans. They yeah. had a, they had a more of a of a, of a of a I guess a visual rapport. Yeah. Than this crew. Yeah. See, I'm so, looking at it now. I'm Googling to double check. Uh, it's got a 2015 release date here. Look, well, I, it, even if they don't recast it, that's still plenty of time to rewrite it. Right, but These they said they're still going... Uh, I do remember seeing that they said even if it gets recast, rewritten, they, it still needs to hit that release date. I think it, which it's is March 6, that, 2015. At that point, it's important to try to separate what's the, the fan casting stuff. Yeah. And what's really going on? Yeah. Um, these movies these days, especially comic book movies, they're so they're templated in a way that they probably get filmed in like four months. Of course, it's all like add stuff later, you know. Uh, and then they all they all try to follow the as far as storyline, they try to fo follow similar storylines and mm -hmm. um, like the old heroes journeys and all these other classic journeys, and then they leave enough probably like uh, enough room just for like the rendering of the 3D effects which takes probably takes the longest yeah because yeah. these days everything is just shot in front of a green screen you know yeah unless you're the you're freaking uh, like the hobbit and they gotta send everybody to New Zealand which is not they're not gonna do that for Fantastic Four no. so it's all green screen they're getting sent to the Bronx yeah um, well, well, even, even Bronx better Bronx. even better casting news Hugh Jackman's coming back to Wolverine mm-hmm He's being recast, which that's actually big news because there are rumors going on that he's just not going to be Wolverine for much longer. Right. Which which is horrible news because he's been the best. He actually he engulfed himself in the character. Well, can you really say he's been the best if he's been the only one? Ah, that's true. I think the the only other comparison is cartoon Wolverine. From which version? Nineties. Oh yeah. The short, Loved it. the short Loved Canadian it. guy. That's that's Wolverine. That's still. Wolverine. I remember when they first encountered Magneto, and they're sitting in Xavier's study. He's like, "So what are we gonna do?" And he pops open a soda can. He just simply, let's go kick his butt. Yeah, I was like, it. "Yeah, <laughs> writing right there." You know, <laughs> yeah, poetic baby. You didn't write that. <laughs> no, I didn't. But that that's oh, poetry, man. poetry, emotion, like poetry. Uh, yeah. So I'm very glad to hear that he's coming back for a, a third Wolverine movie. That did you see the last Wolverine movie? No. But I imagine they're bringing them back to finish any and wrap up any tie-ins that might come up from uh, first class and all that stuff. Kind of like wrap that thing up, mm -hmm. and then they'd probably recast him. Since we're on this, the whole Fantastic Four reboot and everything, let me ask you: with the X Men movies, and I mean all of them, the the three first ones, First Class, Days of Future, both Wolverines. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you think Fox needs to do a strong X Men reboot to get the continuity right? Man, they. Uh, or do you think there's a way that they can fix it? Because I know a lot of fans were, myself included, upset about the uh, the continuity of like X Men First Class with Havoc being older than Cyclops and it's taking place in the '60s and you know what I mean. I think 
I think since they've already messed with characters like the Dark Phoenix, yeah, and since they're doing something like Days in Future Past where they're messing with time tra- traveling, mm-hmm. they have two very powerful, very powerful do sex machinas where they could tie things in. Yeah. They could still clean up. Be like, I'm sorry, we're in the future. <laughs> that's what happened. For the future, For the future. That's that that's what shit? happened. Yeah. They, they have that going for them, and they should just use it to their advantage and just keep moving forward. Right. Yeah. Um, so many f- other franchises are already moving forward. Do you have time to backtrack? That's true. You know, Marvel... I mean, we have Marvel, even though, even though these are Mar- Marvel-owned characters. The actual Marvel properties mm-hmm. and films, they're moving forward very strongly. You can't just backtrack like, crap. X-Men still has to catch up eight years later. So you think Fox should kind of stay on the path they're on until their rights expire, and then when Marvel gets it back, Marvel starts afresh? Yeah, look, Fox, write a good Fantastic Four movie, and then and then try to reboot everything else. Yeah. Because that's just four characters. Which, is, they're like a family who get themselves into trouble. You know, you could you could watch much. Johnny Quest episodes that are, <laughs> that are better than any of the last two Fantastic Johnny Four movies. Quest. But that's what that's it, right? No, totally. So I found the article while David and I were discussing this. Uh, according to Uprocks with two X's dot com, they've got an article that says is Fox planning to recast Fantastic Four, rewrite the script, and replace the director? And what the article says is that they learned a while back the four actors were closing deals to star in the uh, star in Chronicle director Josh Trank- Trank's Fantastic Four reboot. Michael B. Jordan is Johnny Storm, which is I think got the most. Uh, fan response the negativity towards it Kate Mara Sue Miles Teller is Rich or excuse me is Reed yeah Yeah, and Jamie Bell is Ben Grimm Uh, as always people complain Michael B. Jordan was impressively calm about some of the worst comments now Bleeding Cool of all people reports Fox is actively looking for replacements for both director Josh Trank and screenwriter Simon Kinberg they have also they also say Fox now has a casting issues on the other hand, Screen Crush says high-level sources at Fox have denied the rumor in, in its entirety, saying filming is still scheduled to start on April 21st. She just kicked the camera. And so Josh Trank is, the the, right uh, <laughs> is on the set now. As reassuring as that seems, the rumor unfortunately coincides with the strange development. Josh Trank has deleted his Twitter account, which is very... Wow, that's, really, that's messed up. Yeah, he was um, active on Twitter I, up until now. It doesn't that suck that, that, they, that they made a, you know, Johnny Storm an African-American. It just sucks that he's getting grief because of that. Yeah. There could have been good story there, like some deep emotional issues, like him and Sue are adopted, and you know, their their parents is, you know, had them involved in all these government contracts, and that's why they're in this position to begin with. There was a lot of cool. St- I wrote that. There was a lot of cool stuff that you could have really worked into that. Let me let me give you the update. According to this, it says update. Bleeding Cool posted another article saying this. Our sources were impeccable. By which we mean those who had actually been approached by Fox for this gig. We are no do- in no doubt that Fox are going ahead with their current production plans for Fantastic Four right now. But last week, we were also in no, in no doubt that they've been looking to junk it all. And these aren't mutually exclusive notions. It's quite possible that no one they approached said yes. Bleeding Cool knows directly of two big names who said no. Fantastic Four is set to open March 6, 2015. As much of a cluster F as Fantastic Four movies tend to be, I think we can all agree on one as thing. As we noted several times. If they fire Kate Mara, it's clobbering time. Um, I'm not, I'm not liking can't, any you of can't, the you cast, can't, though. Okay, but you, could, you can't also back away just because of the hate. Right, right, right. You, I mean, look at the, look he at, cast it as Batman, you get hate. Look at these four guys here. Okay, let's, let's take out the obvious Michael Jordan here. And I hate that name. Because all I think is, you know... Look, they're going for the, the team thing. I, I, I get a lot of things that you're pointing at. And they're going for the team thing. Uh, that's what's rocking it right now. The movies out that are right now uh, was the Hunger Games stuff. That yeah, project. no, I totally CW, get it. CW owns the market for, for tying things into the team market. They own that, okay? I totally get um, it. But you... Honestly, you got you to, gotta, like, stand your ground right here. If, if, you're, if you're Fox... Slash Sony because it's also Sony, right? They kind of work together in this. No, stuff. it's just Fox. This is just strictly okay. Fox. Okay, all right, say it, man. All right, and we're back. Apologize for the technical difficulties. Apparently, because I took the position to defend Fantastic Four, karma struck us down. <laughs> 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 I, uh, uh, well, screw it, man. You know. 
Fox should hold it down. They should hold down their position. Ben Affleck got a lot of hate for trying to be Batman. Uh, the hate goes along with the casting. If Obviously, you, you did your casting based on this script. If you feel comfortable about your script, your casting should be fine. Move forward. If you don't like it, then obviously your writers suck. That's it. I still don't want to watch it. I'm not going to watch it either. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Fox. Way to go. Yeah. yeah. I think we should wrap up for this week. Uh, you know, we are we got a little passion here, but we're, we're heading on. Uh, we're strapped for time. So yep. thank, you, thank you guys very much for watching. For everything else, Comic Streamix, go to our website, comicstreamix.com. Thank you very much.